Hello, everybody, and welcome back. It's the Star Ladder I League Invitational. We're hopping into game number two of our European final. It's Vega Squadron going against Five Team Spirit. I'm Kyle Gaffer Beyond the Summit, and I'm going to be joined again by Mr. Rio Boris here. Alan, welcome back, He's Team Spirit. Time. Game number one, well, coming out of the gate, they must have stubbed their toe, I guess. It was uh, not their best performance, and Vega were kind of able to just play their game. Time was on their side. They had a grossly farmed Mag Lone Druid. FN in the bottom lane on his Spectre had a, an easy breezy lane set up to work with, and there wasn't much going for Team Spirit. What would you like to see from Team Spirit as far as changing things up possibly for game number two? Yeah, don't give Mag an easy offlane with the bear. This is the biggest problem for me. I mean, normally you're able to shut down the bear's farm and make him go back but what they did is they set up greedy lanes and then they put the doom against a lone druid and they just didn't get the kills with the chin. I guess that's what it comes down to. They thought they could and they didn't. So with him not being shut down, the spectre having free farm, Puck doing well in mid, all three lanes for Vega 1. So you have to change up something and it's probably just go back to stock and standard, you know, dual or tri lane. And there we go. I mean, all right, well. That's a good way they, to change things up. Team yeah. Pick. yeah. You've been playing a bit of Earth Spirit recently. I, myself, enjoy the spirit. As disgusting as most people find it, I feel like he is a crowd pleaser. And I don't think people can deny that. He makes epic plays happen, whether it's epic fails or great use of stonework. Now, I that means I also find a lot of pride in, in the Earth Spirit I'm not good at playing it, but I certainly feed people who are good. Vegas and uh, Always One Fly didn't impress me. Not the way, like, a, a, you know, at least not that crazy high caliber we've been seeing from, like, a Fear or a Jerix or even Weeha's mid or Spirit. Um, but nonetheless, they Ten get the ut uh, utility of having Earth Spirit in their game. And it's something that Vega are just going to have to prepare Five for a bit. Remain. And I already like that Team Spirit as well. Even got rid of the puck just to make sure that one of the few mid laners who are actually good at dodging the troubled Earth Spirit, you know, they're not going to have that option to go for. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what else you can go for. Queen of Pain versus Invoker. Queen of Pain can win early on too. Uh, so maybe they want to ban that as well. Not too many heroes left to deal with the Invoker besides the PL, which we've seen that happen or re or just surgence of that hero against the mid. And it's not that bad in this. You can purge you off a what? lot of the things for Earth Spirit later. Probably. Is it sounding of, bad? The, the Queen of Pain, probably, right? It's no one. Queen of Pain can Radiant blink away from Earth Spirit. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. it just feels like that's something they would do. But, I mean, yeah, yeah. thinking about the other options, it's just. It's good. Yeah, to go it's against. Queen of Pain or, no, or PL for mid. PL mid because be you could awesome. just doppelganger away. Yeah, you know what you could also Ten do, which is remaining. popular on the other side of the planet, is uh, the jug mid. Five seconds you know, just remaining. Just bleed yeah, from trouble. Decent. I don't but know I if I would invoker. jug against invoker. Yeah. No, I'm, I, I'm. I guess for me, I'm thinking more on the when you know you have someone like an Earth Spirit or a Bounty Hunter or someone like that who's kind of messing with you. But right. On add on top of that, an invoker, then yeah, jug jug doesn't look so good. Quap. Quap looks great. We'll see if it's something they do opt for. In the meantime, though, Vega have opted for more of the nature side of things. You get the Mag Beastmaster and an Enchantress here, so good push. Great map vision. Great BKB breaking Vegas stun lockdown. Spells. Yeah. And then DPS going through. Oh, scaling nice capability of an Enchantress. Of they should ban on Night Stalker here. I think they can get away with running Night Stalker offlane and Earth Spirit roaming, pick another support, and then maybe even go remaining. for like a Spectre themselves for Team Spirit this time. But Five I think the biggest remaining. counter to the Beastmaster is Night Stalker in my eyes. It just yeah. cripples the hero, and it just takes everything away exactly. from him. And then once you have the initiation on your side, it can help out. And they have a lot to deal with the Enchantress Untouchable already. Magnetize plus the Invoker's Sunstrike, yeah. and you can set up for a lot. They'll still need another hero to deal with it. So Ursa, Crystal Maiden, and dude, totally would be great. Yeah, Crystal Maiden. Ursa we've we've been talking too, yeah. about CM a lot, especially against a Beastmaster now with these dual offlane. Yeah, absolutely. What what else could it be? It's either that or Witch Doctor. I mean, I mean they could. Team we saw also... the team go. 
I was gonna say Dark Seer for the benefit of Iron no. Shell or Spirit. Oh, they're gonna ban Dark Seer, so forget that. Vegas Squadron not about that life. Team pick. They get a Zeus though, so we were wrong. I was wrong. Funny how they banned Dark Seer when Oracle's still in the pool though. But maybe they just pick Dark Seer for the fourth one and then you don't have the Oracle pick. So Vegas it's better just to ban it out. Yeah, that's pick. true. That's true. Is this Zeus Specter? Are we seeing it, Dakota? There's the Wish Doctor. Oh, that mm. would be terrible, but you know, it feels cheesy. Vega it was feels one like game this up. is the game. It feels like this is the game. But Zeus, I mean, you have to bank that Earth Spirit's not going to catch him off in the mid lane or give him a lot of trouble, or they give Zeus. They can give like a, a nice solo safe laner, and maybe, and then give Zeus a good plus one in the mid lane. I don't know, like a Bane, something that just, Five seconds just in remaining. case. But maybe we see Enchantress camp mid with her creeps like a wild win or yeah, or something true. to help out the in, against the invoker where we don't see the enchant plus beast off lane and then you, then you can get away with running another support plus specter but well, we don't know what team spirits off lane is going to be void would so be nice for that off lane yeah, void plus like one or something could yeah. cause havoc if they do pick the specter so is it, they they don't have enough information right now for yeah. vega to pick very greedy but it's just an easy line up to execute, so they might still go for it. Mm -hmm. Else, what is left, really? Gyrocopter could be okay here. Yeah. Gyrocopter's um, there. Five seconds remaining. Or random? Yeah, or random. Random's always there. Shadow Shaman, Shadow Shaman though, will be the choice it said. And it's a Shadow Shaman, pick. and I, I always say this, like, when there was a line available. And I find these two to be pretty similar in most aspects. You get two different Chase sets of lockdown. There's the void, by the way. Uh, and but the thing that Shadow Shaman offers over someone like Lion is great wave clear, great pushing potential. Where Lion has the great bursting potential if you're going against like a DP or something like that. So Vega obviously putting some favor and in, in pushing pretty good too. So I wonder if that's going to be reflected uh, with their last pickup, their, their safe lane pickup, or maybe they just like Shadow Shaman over Lion and their support plays it better. I, I don't know. maybe I'm thinking too hard about it. Ryu. I don't know. Yeah, but with the Shadow Shaman pickup, it allows them to pick up the Faceless Void. It's going to be hard for him to... See, there's two good things about Shadow Shaman versus Faceless Void. One is it adds that element that you need. You have to have a very long, reliable lockdown so you can burst the Faceless Void before he time walks. But the problem yeah. is you can trade right clicks against him early on, and you'll be very effective, and Shadow Shaman can't. It's just your Stout Shield, you have a uh, Stout Shield on the Faceless Void, and then you Shadow Shaman with like 280 movement speed. You're just gonna not win in that right-click battle, and so at least he has that going for him. Faces void shouldn't have the hardest time here unless they pick. So there's no more global really in the game. There's Ember Spirit banned out. Can't get to travel around. Spectre's banned out. You might just have to get another Seconds. solid hero. Yeah, Sven core AA, or Gyros. You know, we'll uh, Ursa Warrior. Okay. Oh, it talked about Ursa earlier, but, but on the other I team. thought it was yeah, the other yeah. side. Yeah, no, Vega opt to go for it instead. Could be also maybe a casual deny pick. I, I wouldn't have put it past, yeah, Ursa to still be picked up from Spirit there. Maybe Vega just like, yep. oh, we'll take it for ourselves. Thank you very much. Now for Spirit, though, Gyrocopter. the other available option that we were discussing a bit, or more so you, Gyrocopter will come out. So, all right. Faceless Void also, well, I don't know if it was mentioned, was the, the time dilation is going to be pretty damn swell, especially against the likes of the Zeus. Oh, yeah. Pretty swell. No, no, you're right. The Coddle's... The Coddle Coddle. The Coddle. <laughs> is... The Coddle. Yeah. Um, how do I say it now? Coddle? No. Ah, whatever. I'm going to mess my brain oh, up even more. Trying to go down the road of Coddle Coda, it's... Yeah. Yeah, you'll yeah. Just, <laughs> you only make yourself look bad, unfortunately. My it's mother. not processing in my head right now. It's okay. <laughs> At all. It just doesn't feel but, right on the tongue. That's probably why. That's what she said. Let's move on with the game. It's game number two, Spirit versus Vega. This is the final of the ward. European qualifier. And yeah, We're already save it. early ward down here. Look at this. Oh, wait. What's that? Okay. Oh, they shared the EXP. You noobs. You stood too close. Please. Oh, over here? What, they they ward on this cliff over here? Oh, they dewarded here. Oh. And... They left it for Zeus, and they wanted him to get the quick level too, but they were standing in the XP range. It's funny. Oh, well, that could have been a what game? We saw that game recently, right? It was the Alchemist. The Al, yeah. He got Ward, 
XP and bounty XP, and he started the game off level two in the laning phase for mid lane. And having that acid spray on top of Grievel's Greed, and he was even stuck against the bounty hunter uh, floating around that mid lane. And it was just so much, and it kind of was the leading ripple effect to get them yep. to win in the end. It was ridiculous how the game can be defined by the. Not even before the clock even starts. It was, it's just crazy. What a game Dota is. Yeah, that's you know? why I love Dota the most because you can get so active around the map anywhere and like just counter rune or counter the uh, runes early on, you know, go for those plays or just counter the wards and just all around good play. So now let's see if Team Spirit can win this game and they're setting up to have a really good laning phase here. They've got dual lanes uh, in the mid. Going to be uh, and then you know, we talked about that Zeus is just going to get absolutely crushed here. And how's yeah. he going to handle this? Better believe, always want to fly is waiting in the shadows with that orb of venom, waiting to go here. But you know, it is a lot of pressure. You got to connect with this rolling boulder, otherwise you could roll yourself into that that tower, turn around, burst, which could be a quick level three Zeus, and you're dead. And always want to fly. It looks like he might have to just take this adventure to the bottom lane. Mag is moving pretty far forward, but Mag does have that ward there. Uh, they might be able to kind of get the idea that it's there based on his approach and Mag kind of pulling off a bit, but I don't think they even have a sentry to work with. So this could be a little problematic here. No easy options for always want to fly at the start of this game. And no, that's just going to be hard for him. Maybe he could have started off top lane and they could have got the kill on the Shadow Shaman, but even that would have been hard because Sioma here, he started off with Boots first, and I really like seeing this play. If you don't play extra greedy on the Shadow Shaman early, he can just be food. So, Gallblack getting pressured here by Mac. He's the one who has Boots. Still has a Fairy Fire to work with. Illidan, though, close by. Hard for him to harass constantly, and there you go. Level 2, at least for the Beastmaster. That's all he really wanted. He was Really take it to the Goblack there earlier. And uh, we'll force Goblack to kind of go with the region, but it opens up the lane to be pushed enough so that Mag could intercept the rune here for himself. Always Wanna Fly is going to head to that area. By the way, Always Wanna Fly in the meantime did roll onto that mid lane, try to make it go for the Zeus, but I guess the connection wasn't there. And uh, that gank attempt will leave oh nothing, my. and now he's in trouble. Oh, oh nice! Him. Now that's what you got to do against the Earth Spear. Mag just walks right in front of him, blocks him off. Goblack's going to be forced to step in, and well, to their benefit, him being beside Illidan that boar. Help. Oh my god, Mag <laughs> hit so Gyro. hard. Now Goblack's in trouble. Illidan's gonna have to rotate in. Always want to fly getting a bit too close. They're gonna be forced out. The fairy fire here, this time, will not get blocked. They have kited Mag around they for have quite a while. Strike. Level 2. If can they, they can they get eyes him? on him. Oh. They're thinking about Where it here. Where are you going, Iceberg? Help him. He wants to deny. Always want to fly. He's gonna be able to deny himself, Mag. I'll deny myself <laughs> too. Double kill for the Sainer Grapes. <laughs> well played. To oh, top lane, though. Oh, he didn't. Sioma? Okay, well, they're going to be able to chase him down, maybe? No. Oh, he uh, actually I'm surprised. Already, yeah. He got two in shackle and didn't get it off. That was a dead funny. Yeah, he already time walked, too. That was trouble for him. But that opportunity's gone. That was a lot of, mid lane, though. A lot of time. Oh, mid lane. Yeah, you're right. They made a move. It's solo. Man, he must have went all the way around the bend to come up from the south. He had been hanging out in the Vega Woods this whole time, and comes up from the bottom that is definitely that something i'm sure iceberg wasn't expecting it will not lead to a kill always want to fly swing and a miss on the rolling boulder and this is where you kind of get <laughs> okay okay i uh i didn't catch him the first time mid lane not the second time we didn't get mag he is level two though so at least he has the stun to work with but this is when you're getting a bit nervous yeah you're getting a bit nervous yeah the marana effect definitely can apply to someone like earth spirit the benefit for earth spirit though is that once he gets to level six he does have a better peaking window to work with for like a second round but if he's able to get to a level six in good time we'll see so what did happen was solo like i said he would start off helping out the mid lane he threw a tornado earlier to help out against iceberg but it didn't do that much at the end of things um and that's just because the zeus kind of pushes out his lane uh, or the zeus yeah the zeus pushes out his lane and then iceberg still is going to be farming on his side of the map so the tornado wasn't as effective. And then the second gank there for, or the second attempt to try and help mid lane failed. So they're not shutting down the invoker, but looking at the CS, it's dead even right now besides the denies. And yeah. speaking of the denies, it doesn't even matter. Zeus is going to have his level six first. 
Almost. And they have the potential to put it to work much faster than uh, what Spirit would be able to do. Yet to see our first blood shed on this one. FN pushing way past the tower here. Funic obviously still content on being able to play it close. Has Radiant's the time walk in case there's trouble, but man, FN just not letting up. Just get the hell over here. Not able to get the grab and now even Solo looking to get involved for this one here. So Funic can be playing a dangerous game. Mid lane, they finally got Oh, they no made one. their move. And it looks like with a jump on the no one, help with the four spirits. Always want to fly getting the connection this time with that boulder roll. Now has his level three. And they'll be able to get no one down. So this has definitely got to be a, a quick use of a uh, Thunder Gods as a response for sure. They need to find somewhere. Oh, bottom lane, Mag oh, is just getting really low. I'm, I'm very worried how they're going to find their initiation now for the side of Vega. I mean, last time it was all on no one's puck going around, setting up everything, but here you don't have a Spectre to haunt it. Oh, they got the hold on Funic, but he's just going to walk away. Yep. He has the phase boots. Not going to catch up, though. No, uh, it looks like uh, Shadow Shaman just a bit too far to be able to get the connection. So Funic will make it away from trouble. So. This uh, early laning phase going pretty oh, nice here. Kick. Top lane, jump in, we see it. Funic does go down, and they quickly end up making it a one-for-one one trade. That's always one of fly looks to intercept and kind of make the trade after FN does get the first pick. Bye, always want to fly. It's nice knowing you. Bing, bada boom, and no one quickly turns it into a double kill. All right. And he's good. close to our He needed it. Oh, they're gonna get this ward too. Funix still not level six. Doesn't have the Chrono to work. Denied. But ah, Ooh, nice. nice, nice. Yeah, thank you very much. Walks away with the extra fifty gold, and under no one takes his business back to the mid lane. So I was just like on the back end of a statement, getting ready to see that this game was going quite a bit better for Team Spirit in the early laning phase. You were saying it was even, and then they managed to get the pick off, and then all of a sudden Vega are just not content with that. They turn things around and, and quickly turn it into a two-two. It's still favoring Team Spirit a bit more just because they're getting the levels on Faceless Void, whereas, you know, Mag here on his beast is just not... The progression is not there. And he's forced to go into the jungle constantly. And maybe it would be nice if he could have a lane to his own if Ursa had... If Ursa was going to go for the, you know, the, the lifesteal build, uh, build and go into the jungle, but... Normally, you would leave it for Rasta still for someone to get yeah. his level oh. six mid lane, though. Yeah, long roll. Don't need the roll to connect. Get plenty close enough. And the lockdown between Goblack and Always Wanna Fly getting the finish, Boulder Smash, leads to them getting a easy breezy takedown of the Zeus here as Spirit will be able to respond. And quickly, we see Always Wanna Fly already at level five. So this turned out Radiant's nicely after kind of two swings and two misses in the early gank attempts. He's been able to kind of get himself back on the map. Even building up some stacks right now for a future gyrocopter to kind of farm up. Eight minute rune will also be his. So a nice little arcane snag. Things continue to come up nicely here for Spirit, and we'll have to wait and see what Vega's response will be. We have Thunder Gods ready to go. Uh, Ursa has picked up his Morbid Mass, but as you mentioned, this should be a tool to kind of allow the lane to be opened up so that these supports can get some farm a bit. But they do also have the wards together on this Rasta, so. Maybe it's time to push for some tier ones. We'll see. They also do have great Roche potential on the side of Vega. Enchantress and wards if necessary. Yeah. Right now, let's look at the EXP. I'm surprised that's kind of... I guess it's heavily favoring just the Invoker now because of his Midas. But as for the supports are going, it's all for Vega. Like Even though they have level 5s on the supports of Team Spirit, they're level 6 for Vega. So this is when they can start putting out the pressure and maybe they should smoke gank somewhere or like you said just go for the Roche but it's hard to go for a Roche with Ursa because he's just gonna be off the map they're gonna know it's gonna be happening so the play here for Vega might just be up to farm or to farm Mag finally got his level six okay there we go Solo could be in trouble here always want to fly long roll in Call down, no kick yet. He's waiting for the stun just in case there's a TP out. Will not be necessary. They get the connection and we'll be able to take him down. It could be a potential early baited play here. A smoke movement in comes out from Vega. Let's see what they can do with it though. Mag leads in, he's got the roar. Boom, yells right at the first spirit. Always wanna fly, gonna be going down. 
And just as fast Spirit will turn and run. So at least a, a trade in the end of, of two different supports. You really want to have more though for Vega. If yeah. they could have got the roar off on the shower copter, it would have been well worth it. But now they're just going to start going for the Roshan because they know a lot of the ultis are down. Void still has his Funix moving on up, but is he going to be there in time? This is just so fast because of the Ursa. Yeah, it looks right. like it This could be bad for Vega. Yeah, okay. Here comes Spirit. Here comes Spirit. No Magnetize yet, but they already got it done. The Boulder Smash will connect. Saoma kind of sitting still after getting it done. Void Chrono comes out for FN. This could be a quick Aegis here. And it will be going down. Good Boulder connection there from Always Wanna Fly. Mag, of course, with no roar. No good counter fight. This could lead to trouble for Vega. FN, they're fighting right in the choke point. Leads to a beautiful multi-man silence with the geomagnetic grip. That means that Zeus is going to be locked down a bit, but here comes no one. Turn around, fire. Always want to fly. Is going to be able to get his level 6. Pops down the Magnetize. This could be the end. No one's going to walk into a stone. Oh, <laughs> Magnetize just concluded right there. Thank God. Mag in the meantime, though, eating still big Magnetize damage. Funic leaping away from the impetus. Still good. Woo. I'm good. He's good. He's oh, good. It's just scouting out. That was so close. Now he's going to get a rune here. What would you like to have, Zeus? Oh, I'll give you a regen rune, says Heaven. And now he's going to be full HP here. But that was really good, all things considered. I thought Team Spirit were going to run away with it because, like you said, that four-man silence just came in at the perfect time. But but no one was able to survive. And no because one, of yep, that, yeah. All the oh, they it's got dead, a nice... Though. Oh, they should have pulled that stone for the silence. That's when you got the sweet moves. Come on, always want to fly. Nonetheless, they still get the gank, make it look pretty simple there as it's a three-on-one. And now they smoke. They're not done yet. I mean, one of the wonderful things for Earth Spirit is that his ult attack. cooldown is pretty damn short. So only five more seconds. He'll have it up and at the ready. Only two stones to work with. I'd say three, and you definitely can get some work done. But they also do have Goblax Death Ward Dyer's here if necessary. Is under attack. Yeah, it's nice to have three stones so you can go for that double stone play to silence everybody. And normally start off with a kick. So, we're going to have to see what happens here in the top lane. Looks like the smoke is going to be wasted once again. And that could be the difference in this game if they start wasting all their smokes. Yeah. And they're just not being effective. And meanwhile, top lane. Oh, oh. They have eyes on Sioma. They're thinking in from about no moving fun. in. And they even drop a call down right on the wave. So always want to fly is going to commit on in. No one is able to get off his ultimate in time. This does some good damage onto Illidan. But can they get the finish? Wards are going to be going down. There goes the roar. Puts Goblack right under those wards. So he quickly gets shredded apart. Illidan not going to be able to make it away. Solo steps in. Catches him with a javelin. And they get the follow-up. Makes it a three for two. Man, that was a quick and ruthless fight. Five hit the deck. All the meanwhile, Iceberg will continue to farm up this mid lane. But it is Vega who do get the better net worth trade. Yeah, no TP on Invoker as well as the TP on Phonic was on cooldown. So they kind of lucked out there not having the faces Void Chrono. Yeah. Else that could have been really good for them at the end of the day. But Vega showing how to respond constantly in these team fights, And with that... Beastmaster is going to be benefiting the most. He's going to have his Necro 1 now. And that's when you start seeing the solo pickoffs around the map. And that's when Illidan is going to be very scary. He only has 1,000 HP right now. He went for a Helm of Iron Will. Oh, I was watching that deny. Wasn't there. And that's going to be his Necro 2 very soon for Mag. So Illidan, I'm very worried for him now. Because he's not going to be farming as effectively. And he doesn't have the HP pool, HP pool to yeah. sustain a gank. Bottom. Yeah, you got a Zeus on the other side. Bottom lane, yeah. Chrono and uh, Witch Doctor Ultimate. We've seen this combo, I'd be, you know, a couple of times before. And you see the effectiveness of it there. Easily takes down the scary bear. And Spirit are going to also find their way down this mid lane. Looks like a tier one is in order for them. This is their first tower takedown of the game. In fact, there's been very little towers taken down at all this game. This is the second tower in total. But now we, we know that fallen. these teams have a lot of free money on the map to pick up. This could quickly get them to those tier 2 items that much faster. And no one with a DD rune. Thinking about going to the mid lane. Always want to fly is going to miss the stun. 
I bet you he would have went in if it connected. He had magnetized ready to go, but I think that could have led to some serious trouble. Probably not a good idea to go in the mid lane. It's just showing right now for me, both off laners are going to have a really nice game, obviously. So, Funic, nice initiation so far. He's going to have his blink dagger soon. And as I'm, I'm going to jinx him because he looks dead to me. Oh, he's dead for sure. He got hexed up. He got zapped up. He got hit with lightning. And then one quick smack from FN will put him under. And Vega have now taken the lead of this game. Net worth is back in their favor or coming their way in their favor. And they're going to be able to get this tier one tower. Radiant's so tower Team Spirit, attack. I don't know if they have the lineup to afford to hand Radiant over so much to Vega. I mean, their lineup here. definitely will peak fast. They can't really stretch this game out too long where Spirit might be able to play with the clock Radiant's a bit more. So Vega continued to get a lot. And well, we were mentioning how Illidan was lacking a bit in the farm and because of that was not able to build up a lot of life. But hey, at least he has this huge girthy stack to work through. So you could throw together an S and Y probably in the near future. A huge props to always want to fly having that triple stacked and then them finally being able to do it here. Like you said, Sanjin Yasha could be next item. You might want to go for a BKB just because Mag with his mana burn and his solo pickoff potential yeah. might be too much, and you're going to get bursted down. Also, you're going to have true. a problem with Ursa. He's uh, like he's one hero that doesn't care about BKB Dakota, and it's could be a problem. Yeah, for Illidan. Really can it? Mag four also. We'll make the setup if necessary, reg regardless if you're in your BKB glo Golden Glory or not. That roar this time, though, will be on the Funic, and that is vicious. Can you imagine just sitting in a lane, farming up, and then some dude jumps in, yells in your face, and you're like, whoa! And all of a sudden, the bear will just eat you up. That must be a and terrible life And lightning come down from heaven. Oh. Oh, man. Yeah, it's just, it's over before you know it. Top lane always want to fly. He's going to catch out solo, but... Obviously, Solo has Radiant's no way to stop them from TPing out, and the pressure attack. comes back Radiant's the way towards Spirit, where Vega are going to be pushing in towards this Tier 2. Spirit need to decide where they're going to put their attention. It's towards this bottom lane. Iceberg, it looks like he's making his move, gets the cold snap off. Mag has no roar, and it looks like he might have no life here. Even a call down committed for this one. They'll finally get him. It's Iceberg pretty much alone who will get the job done. Spirit showing that there is still some fight in them. It's just both teams kind of like, you know, we take one kill, then the other team takes another kill, and then it's just way, like right now it's just back and forth, and that's how this game should be because of their ultimates and their timings for everything. It's just Funic has kind of draw the short end of the straw so far. <laughs> He's been targeted, you know, the last two times, and Vega, I think they're just waiting for the next Roche, and they're going to try and set up around that while attack. trying to do those smoke ganks with the Beastmaster. Speaking of Beastmaster, let's look at the vision right now. We have two deep wards for Vega, as well as the Hawk constantly scouting out. Yeah, they the definitely have gank? some good offensive vision, and they're prepared to work here. They step in, they side past the Courier. They want to go for the juicier meat here. Oh, what a coconut! Got to keep him alive for now, but then FN finally gets the catch onto him. Will not be able to get the grab for Illidan though, so this big smoke movement is going to only Radiant lead to a, a Witch Doctor takedown. And, you know, from the perspective of Spirit, they're probably going to be pretty happy that the lowest net worth in the game had just tanked the gank, where things could have been a lot more sketchy for Illidan, who's in farm mode right now. He opted for the Yasha first. He's got the move speed to work with the extra bits of damage, but he still needs that life. So that's where the Sage comes into play. And this is where I, well, I explain things like John Madden, apparently. John Madden. Mm. John Madden. Dota John Madden's right the best. If you're John Madden, then yeah, you're Dakota's doing pretty good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're doing damn good. I mean, I would love to have my name on Dota 2K16 or whatever the new Madden game. I is. I mean, you were a chest. You did have a I did a sexy yeah. picture. No one knows it's me because I'm clean shaven there and I look like a, a glamour shop boy, but whatever. Nonetheless, I guess you it's look something like you're 18. I can, yeah, I'll print it out and put it on the fridge in the future, I guess. We'll have to see, though. Well, you know what would go nice on a fridge? A win at Star Ladder Invitational. Both these teams have fridges, I'm sure. Let's see if they can get a, a check to put on it. 
I mean, when you're a gamer, you don't even go to the fridge. You just well, eat maybe out. They can, maybe they can buy a fridge with the <laughs> money, you know? Yeah, you just a mini fridge by the computer. Yeah, you, just, you get a mini fridge and put it by your computer so you can just Dota. And you put a bucket under your chair, and then you're really yeah, you're, South Park you're a pro now. gamer. Yeah. <laughs> we're South Park. Hello, Cartmans. Latest requirement at boot camps they don't like to tell you about, to be honest, but... We'll see. Are, I wonder, Spirit's boot camping, right? I'm sure they They have are. to be. I think Vega are I think. too. I'm not sure. I don't know about Vega. That's, that is me, you know, obviously with my lack of the European scene and their knowledge. I can tell you which American teams are boot camping, but... Perfect location. I'm only blessed with the opportunity to see Spirit and Vega when they actually get on the screen to play. Don't, I don't know too much about their personal life, unfortunately. Really nice guys. Regeneration. Now everybody's nice in the Dota world once you meet them. Uh, oh yeah, fine. once you meet them, yeah. For, so everyone's nice. Well, not online. <laughs> but you're like, oh, we're all friendly. Here you go. But you know who's not friendly is Roche, and even unfriendlier is Vega. And once again, do they have a they, smoke? Uh, there we go. Certainly don't have a friendly relationship with the big guy, and are happy to take his Aegis and or cheese at any opportunity here. But obviously this time, Spirit, they're the wiser, and they're going to continue to kind of scope this one out. Mr. Hellbear Smasher will kind of spot things out here for Vegas so they can assess the situation. The wards have already been committed here, and that's something that Spirit have seen, so they don't have to worry about that in any potential fight. But Solo has isolated, always want to fly, gets him a couple of bits of damage, but the sun's going to be there into a call down. Solo's in a bit of trouble, but she can take a lick in here. Jump in from oh Phonic will be able to catch out too with a nice combo though. Comes out from Iceberg and then the Magnetize will flow. But it is going to be all about Vega at the end of this one. Man, Solo lives at the end of it, leads off the fight, and is there at the end with the last kill. Vega had the resilience and they just kind of played around Spirit in that one. Yeah, Illidan just got wrecked. Even though that Chrono looked good, but it's not on your Ursa, it's not on your Beastmaster, and they just had the best initiation coming in from Vega. Really well played. They get Roche after the war afterwards, and they might even get another kill here. Funic. Oh, they got the ward on the high ground, friend. and Funic didn't know about it. So Funic be dead now. Solo. Man, how much money has he just gotten recently? He comes out huge in that fight, gets the pick there. He already has a Dragon Lance. Now on the way to an Agnum Scepter. He's got it. He's got the Agnum Scepter? He's got the he's Agnum got it. Scepter. He just got it. That is crazy. He's got it all. Does he? I don't see the Blade of Alacrity. Are you sure? He might be missing one component. No, I'm just kidding. He's he's almost got it. He'll have it soon. He wants I thought it. I saw I mean, the he's blade. going right to jungle. He's like, I get this, I become a core. I am the core now. Do you think he her, really is cool. her her scaling capability is even better than like a what a support Wraith King used to be, you know? So a lot of teams go for that and have that ability to transition. You know, before that, it was the support alchemist. I mean, you just saw her. She just threw on her heel. heel. They can't even touch her. Yeah. What do you do? You burst. You wasted all of your spells from Invoker, and now you're completely useless with the Invoker. Your gyrocopter got blew up. Yeah. There's, there's just nothing left in the tank. But yeah, here you go, Iceberg. He's gonna have his Ags completed now. He can dish out all of the spells. Yeah. He's gonna have level 16 too. And this is going to help them a lot during the team fights. He just has to, you know, constantly spam out spells. You're going to have to have a lot of good ice walls for tanking or kiting this Ursa. Yeah. And with FM, you're going to be on the front lines a lot of the times because oh, sure. of these this Aegis. They're going to have to find ways to deal with them now. Yeah, we're in full sky cam for this one. Both teams really respecting each other and not looking to take a, a unhesitant first trigger pull. Oh, Samuel gets baited in towards Goblack to make a jump, but they turn it on to him instead. Funnick commits his ultimate for it, will lose his own life. Always want to fly, going to be able to go in, gets off a Magnetize, but they quickly respond with their own big ulti, and that is going to be the primal roar for Mag. Iceberg barely able to make it away on his Ghost Walk. Now Zeus steps in, is going to be able to show the vision there, but FN doesn't want to get baited in too much. He still has this Aegis. Not going to get hit out from that Sun Strike. He needs the heal. Oh, Solo's there. Oh, he even Blink dodges the <laughs> attack from the tower just to make sure he stays alive. Big fight again for Vega. They take down three. Very ambitious jump from Spirit. I don't know if that was the right call to make going so far from the from the safety of your home. All for a Shadow Shaman. Radiance middle tower has fallen. I mean, you, you managed to kill off the annoying Shadow Shaman. He was very annoying last game on his... 
uh, his Oracle. It's almost a big player this game. He's been able to catch out, you know, Funic a lot of times. Maybe he was just tired of, you know, getting shackled, getting hexed all the time. And he just wanted it, but not there, my friend. Later. Later. If there is a later, we'll, we'll see. Wheel 2 always want to fly now, who still only has his, his basic arsenal here built up uh, with his arcane boots. I've been opting to see a lot more Aether lenses on my Earth Spirits these days, but we might see if a Veil is still in order. The team could still benefit a lot from it, a lot from the Gyrocopter and obviously the Invoker to kind of bring to the table to take advantage of something like that. Uh, but in the meantime, his farm has fallen off, opting to obviously hand most of it over to your Invoker and to your Gyrocopter a bit. And speaking of the Gyrocopter, it looks like Ilden has finally been able to put together his next item. It's a BKB here, Ryu. It's got 10 seconds to go. This does mean he does not have the most significant amount of damage, but this will help him survive. Very necessary, uh, and obviously something that Vega may have been taking advantage of in nope. previous fights. No one. Oh, what did nice. No one gets caught out from the Sun Strike here. Do they have the dust? They don't need it. They got the good book, and it will come at the cost of Iceberg. Both mid laners will go down. What, what can we take away from this? It looks like. Vagar wants to quickly go on the offensive, and they feel like they're in a more advancing position with the takedown of the Invoker. Yeah, as you talked about, Gyrocopter's lack of damage and just the discrepancy in the net worth right now. 6k more for the Invoker. Oh, mid lane. They're going to go on solo. Yep. This is Always a good gonna fly, though. Is going to be caught from behind, and Funic is going to be forced to step back. He gets off a really nice time dilation here, but. Uh, it might lead to success. Solo is going to be isolated next. They'll finally take him down. There's the BKB already coming into play. Mag has made his jump for always want to fly, but he realizes he's one of the only ones left. FN is the only one not involved from Vega, and he's all the way at the bottom lane. Always want to fly. He's going to be able to roll in and cut him off from the front. Ilden will walk away with the kill, but no one is back. And he pops off the ultimate there, and will be able to at least get one last little kill, taking down always want to fly with that one. Yeah, that was a two for three. At the end of the day, favoring Team Spirit there. They're going to get you know, a good chunk of gold there, 3,000 gold swing. And that's going to help Illidan a lot because, as we talked about, he's lacking a lot of DPS. It's going to help him transition into the next item, which should be a... I think a Butterfly is the best just before the Enchantress, her right clicks, the Beastmaster's Necro books. And another problem might be he might need to go for the Satanic. We saw how fast he can be blown up. Yeah. So I, I maybe you'd like to see the damage item we talked about, Butterfly, and then go into the Satanic afterwards. Man, what would help too is maybe if they could just somehow get a pipe on somebody here. I don't know, Funic would have to go for it. I mean, always want to fly maybe is the best candidate, but he doesn't have They also need fun. four staffs. Four staffs too? Because you need kiting potentially. You yeah. have to kite. You have to kite Ursa, yeah. and you also have to kite the Roar. And the best way to kite both of them is just get the four staff. So when... Goblex, nowhere near close. Yeah. Always want to fly either. This is like the kind of Boy games where I would not mind more teams experimenting with shifting Dyer's the Earth Spirit into an off lane fire. position. Imagine the value if you got an Agnum Scepter as one of your first big Dyer's luxury items on an, a, an Earth Spirit in this game. I mean, you're talking about oh, you know, hiding potential and four staffs. Well, he has the friendly pull to save someone in need. He's got, you know, the Enchant Remnant if you need to kick pull someone out. And initiate on them, or if you need to just kick out the Ursa and away from the fight. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just a big Earth Spirit. Nut. Yeah, Axe is amazing. You just pull them out and then you can remnant them, like you're talking about. It's, you're, you're not going to get it on a great support item. position, though, is the problem. Yeah. Top lane. Yeah, they're going to find... always want to fly. Nice little quick combo with the kick and then the silence. Leads to a Sun Strike. Leads to a kill, which Ilden is going to be happy to take the KS on. Killing spree for him. It looks like Spirit are finally going to be able to be going back on the offensive. And and really taking over in this game. Oh, FN. One of these guys is dead. Is it solo? Oh, oh nice kick. Nice connection there with the boulder smash. Funic happy to pull out. And that is the combo right there, man. Chrono, Chaos Major. I think it's well worth it. Just popping that ulti on top of solo. I mean, he's, as we talked about, he's a right clicker. He's another core. You have to eliminate him. And this will lead to an easy tier two. Here comes Spirit now. Took our game number one, but we are looking to turn this best of three into a... That, well, the statement was going to be turning this best of five into a best of three, but I choked that one. 
Looking not to choke though, Spirit. Ascending into the high ground now. This is going to force out the wards now as a defensive precaution here from Vega, but they're going to be quickly farmed up. Here comes the rotation. Can they get anything from it? Big jump in from Mag and from FN. FN going to be forced to pull out the ultimate. Mitigates a lot of the damage, but Illidan has popped his BKB and goes back on the offensive now. And look at him go. They're going to be able to quickly turn it into a double kill for the gyrocopter. Tier 3 oh, or down. Rax goes down, and this could be it, man. That was Vega's big defense for the mid lane, and they still can't even get a kill on this one. Rufonic tries to jump in, gets off the time dilation. That is crippling to someone like a Zeus. And you're right. This I one could be, back. This could be fast over, man. Yeah, this is over, it looks like. Solo, can he, can he do something here? And you're right. Iceberg did have to buy back for this one, but walking into a win will certainly make it worth it here. Solo trying his best. Doesn't have the biggest mana pool to work with here, but if he can make chase, he can isolate one person and just, mm, mm, misses uphill, and he is gone. Goblack, nice little glimmer cape escape. But, man, Vega were hit hard right there. That was... They got the wind knocked out of him, and then Spirit walked in and just kicked him right in the groin. It's just really well played coming in from Team Spirit, knowing that you can buy back there on Iceberg and you can get that Rax. I thought they were going to be able to get more, but Solo was still a big problem. They didn't have that reliable lockdown anymore to control him with the Chronosphere, and so they just immediately backed up. So still good play from Team Spirit. And Illidan, he's becoming a monster now. And normally you see FN on the other side of things doing a great job, but he decided to go for an Ags this game. And not having a BKB, it's just getting silenced, getting kited. And that's why you normally don't see this build uh, too much. It, it, it can help out a lot for reducing yeah. the cooldown. And, you know, you can get out of stuns and stuff, but it's just not giving you that 10 second reliable where you're like, oh, nothing's going to hurt me. Yeah, we'll have to see. His ult did some good work in that last fight, but I would have to agree that it did. the trusty BKB might. Might be the bigger deal here. I mean, being able to shrug off the Magnetize too, it's a time. I mean, Magnetize lingers. You can always want to fly, doesn't seem to be lingering in these fights, you know. That's the thing is, at this point in the game, he has the Veil, but uh, the nice thing going for Earth Spirit is he gets a huge amount of strength gain because the small, small AoE of Magnetize means you usually have to be right into the firefight to get the most out of it. So you usually don't end up walking out with your life very often, which means you don't usually get, get to refresh your Magnetize very often at all, but... He's starting to bulk up quite a bit, and the Magnetize will linger, and it will linger longer than this Ursa ulti, where a BKB might have been uh, slightly better. And here comes uh, Spirit now, eyeballing this Roche Pit. Baby Sator going to check it out. Who's that? Yeah, Ursa's floating. Tension's high right now. This Roche is super important, especially for Vega. They need this one to stay in the game. Yeah, it's going to come down to Mag's initiation as well as Funnick. Can Mag kill Funnick off, or is Funnick going to have a great chrono? He's got the Roar. Roar is off there. Can they get the follow-up? Roar goes down. It's quickly canceled. Roll in from Always Wanna Fly. Not a big grip. Magnetize will be there. Illidan already does work, but look at this. Solo isolates and finishes off Illidan trapped inside the wards. Funnick is going to be able to pull out the Chronosphere. Catches out two. Quickly finishes off FN. Turns back now. For no one, but no one happy to go into a head-to-head -head matchup here. We'll chase down oh. Funnick in the Roche pit. In the meantime, though, it's solo all day. Ultra kill for him. Rushes through and just javelins at home. Funnick, it looks like he'll be able to make it away, but this was the fight that Vega needed. They take down four. I don't know, though, if they're going to have enough left to move in and take the Roche here. They're going to have to just kind of... They took all five, too. I mean, that was a buyback coming in for Funnick, and he didn't get anything done. That Chronosphere helped out for getting the kill on FN, but it wasn't the big game changer that I was I was hoping it would be. Yeah, we have not been able to see, like, the... We saw it the one time for the gank, but this hasn't been, like, Chronos to lead into your huge Invoker plus, you know, Death Ward combos. That may be credit to Vega being able to kind of start the fights when they want or being in good positioning. Uh, but it's very apparent that maybe the game plan for a lot of these team fights and what Spirit were hoping for when they formulated this five-man draft was just not not good enough. Illidan wasn't able to get off the BKB. Uh, they were able to lock him down with the Shadow Shaman, and they just went to town on him. Yeah. So, and as well as FN prioritizing to go on to the Invoker, made him go down to like 300 HP, Ghost walks away, and... 
Yeah, this is just with that victory, they're gonna be able oh, to get man. Roche here. Solo is soon. Is... Uh, he's saving up some money. Obviously, you need to have a buyback, but I mean, Hyper right. Stone's gonna come in, and then the Moon Shard. And this Enchantress will hit harder than anyone else, and you kind of like. I mean, most teams seem to, but sometimes you catch yourself in moments when you don't really respect the Enchantress in the fights. So you just figure it's an Enchantress, she's there on the side, but next thing you know, your life is just getting chunked down, and you're quickly putting Thanks the for the pause. Yeah. <laughs> we'll need a moment. It's at a pretty awkward time, but, you know, you got no, no, to give respect to the Enchantress to burst it down. Yeah, sorry about cutting you off there. It's just the the link is driving me crazy if you hover over it now. <laughs> I know, I'm watching. He's, like, roasting this bird up as we speak. It's like a fly caught in the trap. Easy. But I agree, man. Chicken on that one, but well, well, we'll have to see here. Vega, they have been given new life here with this big fight, and now this big Aegis pickup. Obviously, going to be going into the pocket of FN. And hold on, hold on a second. We need a bit more time here, says Spirit. They pause up and high tension, man. For people just tuning in, this is just game number two of a best of five here. It's the European qualifier final for Star Ladder I League Invitational. The winner of this match is who's going to be going to Kiev to play at land there and uh, battle it out for that $100,000 prize pool. So it's nice, you know. This is Star Ladder abridged, if you will, Ryu. You know, no more of that. Well, I, I don't know if it will be back in the future or not, but this season it wasn't that long season of go to play. We got. A small, quick qualifier, some invites, and we're going right to LAN action. And we get to see a lot of the new rosters play on LAN for the first time. It's awesome, man. Yeah, like you said, it was just last minute sort of deal, deciding just to do it. And would have been really he funny if Gyrocopter had just denied that tower on like one HP with his illusion. I would have, I would have went crazy. But these teams obviously don't have to grind it out. It's, it's more fun for them. I want to say where you're just like, oh, I'm done with this. And, you know, two days instead of, you know, two months or something crazy. Obviously, it might not be that long, but it's a lot better for them. Just get it over with either quickly or not. And I hope the series isn't over quick. So, Team Spirit, you got to keep on their pressure. They've lost the last team fight. They lost Roche. Was that the cheese, too, is the question. Yeah, it was the cheese. And Enchantress is holding it now. Yep, and she's so opting so to go for not the all-out crazy glass cannon Bambi Nazi mode where it's, you know, with the moon shard. He's, he's opting for the BKB. Might be the smarter choice. I mean, imagine... I mean, Enchantress just thrives in long-winded fights. There's a select few heroes that like that kind of thing. You know, Bristleback, Necrophos. Enchantress, the more impetus damage she can get off in one, in one standing... You know, fight is, is wonderful for her, and with this BKB, her survivability definitely goes up a couple of points. So, it did a lot of work in the last fight. I wager this time he'll be able to get that much more done. Yeah, they have a lot of counters to her, though. The, the Faceless Void has been prioritizing her in a lot of the cases. So, and then also they have the BKBs for her Untouchable on the two cores. And then the other side is, like, once you have the Agnims coming out from Gallblack, they'll have enough DPS to maybe... Oh, well, speaking of Gallblack, they got the that jump. ward he just put down, he's going to go buy back. Yeah, bye It's, uh, it's no, a sacrifice on. you make as a support when you got to get those wards out there and you're going into the dark. You just never know what's going to be waiting out there for you. The Boogeyman or just Mag. This time it was the latter. Mag will jump in and... They do commit an ultimate and a necro 3 for this, but they know they have the numbers advantage. And with this 5 versus 4 and with this Aegis, they feel like this is their best shot to do some work in the spirit base. Walking on the welcome mat now. Let's see if they can uh, dirty up the carpet a bit. They're going to be walking in. Can they stop them already? I think going to be going to work. There's the stun silence combo. Wards have also been committed, so that's something that they're going to have to take care of now. Ilden steps in, tries to quickly burst them down. They get off. A decent amount of damage. The tier 3 going to be brought down to nearly a quarter of its life. And Ryu, that's all they're going to be able to do with this time. I don't think they're going to be able to do much else with this Aegis. There is two, men two minutes left, though. Man, sometimes it just brings up the Aegis timer perfectly as if there's someone out there doing it, you know, with a button. And sometimes I just have no idea on this timer and no idea when the Aegis will be back. We have that uh, omnipotent, you know, yeah. third person stats man right now. We, we have the catering to call the guy. Yeah, the science is there. The we catering. Damage. Production value. All oh, once here. again, Gallblack. Yeah. They love Gallblack. It's Gallblack season. It really is. And he's 1 8 and 14. And 14 is the big number. I'm sure he wants to be able to flaunt in that one. He's just trying his damnness to take vision control back because we look at their vision now and it's. 
Well, it's pretty pathetic. They oh, can't Mags, see anything. They're going for the play? Oh, they were thinking about making it go into Illidan. They're not going to pounce. This is like the last few moments of this Aegis. They're like, do something. Get it now. You'll get your life back. Radiant it's like a minute left, and they're going right back in the base. He's like, maybe I can get this tower before I... Nope, I can't get this tower. He's like, you know what? It's, yeah, he doesn't it, want to yeah. die in the base. It's, 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 he's like, It'll it's too late now. I got to get out. I'm going to lose the Aegis here. Okay, this is... This is a dangerous game that Vega are playing. Not gonna lie. He will opt for the cheese attack. instead. He just ate the cheese. Wait, what? I think they know that the Aegis is gonna go down now, and they don't want to risk it. It's still good. Mag makes his jump. It's for Funic. That's a huge element to take out of the fight, and he's not coming back. No buyback at all for this faceless void. FN, though. Look at this, man. Iceberg just opens up onto him. It is going to cost him the Aegis here. Impetus damage, though, from Solo is something else, man. He gets a double kill from those back lines. Respect the Bambi. Tier 3 down, and man, they already have another set of wards. That's how long Vega have been camping around this mid lane, it feels. That's going to be a Rax, it looks like here. It felt like Spirit were really on the run back for this one. They even already still have the, the most base damage done, but... That was a convincing move forward from Vega. Uh, where do you think we stand in this game right now, Ryu? Is this a uh, does this push Vega ahead, or does this only make things back even? You feel? I think it pushes them ahead because this is the second time, not the first, the second time Illidan's not able to get off his BKB. They get the vision perfectly coming out with the Zeus ulti. He immediately blinks in with Sioma. The uh, Sioma hexes him, sheeps him up, and then Solo and they both they just gangbang him or something, and both times. Really well played from the support here. At supports coming in from Vega, just taking out a core. Oh. And when that happens in a team fight, FN's in trouble. I mean, he just let's go to town on the other heroes. Meanwhile, FN yeah, he gonna was take all that out cold on his snap. Own, but oh, cold. The the freezing wall is is not going to be able to be there. Shadow Shop in the meantime, he's able to take down the Earth Spear, but we'll keep action up top. No one has shown up, but FN has been kited around between the three. It looks like they're going to go for a response, and oh, one more bit of damage. They'll be able to get it with the Aether Shock. Saber jumps in, is going to be able to get the cleanup there, and Solo begins to go to work for Iceberg. Iceberg, though, gets off the cold Ghost Walk. Cold Ghost Walk. Illidan the Ghost Walk and makes trouble. it away, while on the other side, it's Illidan coming in from the back, and he has now been isolated from the rest of Vega. They will move on to him instead. Phonic jumps in, but the Chrono's only going to be for no one. No one will end up going down. Phonic, it looks like he might be able to make it away here with the Time Walk. And he will step away from trouble. Man, when the dust does settle, looks like what? A three for two, a long-winded fight. Does nab a couple of cores here for Team Spirit. And after a, a hard fight in the mid lane, this actually turns out to be a decent you know, profit boost attack. right now for Spirit. We're still looking at the top net worth being both Iceberg on his Invoker and Illidan's Gyrocopter. Yeah, that's the funny thing. I was looking at it too. I was like, huh, they're losing these team fights, but yet their cores still have the net worth advantage. Speaking of dead people again, we're going to have Shadow Shaman hitting the grave. Nice ghost that they're going to keep him alive for a little bit longer, but not much. Longer. Tornadoes, they just send you back to Kansas. Just one of those things. He is down. But. And uh, it's, it's just a casual little support one off right there. There is not enough momentum for Spirit on the map at this moment to be able to really push towards the side of Vega. And for Vega, I mean, they have pretty damn good wave clear if necessary. You got the Shadow Shaman with his, his shock, and of course, no one's Zeus is going to be able to kind of farm through the lanes pretty fast. It's going to be a bit, though, before we might see another advancement. It's just one of those kind of games where it might be where the stars really align unless there's a, a huge misstep or misplay from one side or the other uh it, it might be just playing around this roche pit having an extra life Ooh, almost got a catch for mag right here mag is playing a dangerous game right now he is moving pretty damn deep always want to fly is on chase has one more kick stun he's gonna go for it it's a bit too far still commits in this stun would connect if he lands it but ah nice quick blink he actually was on site for that kick right there, but Mag was already too far and away. You know, it's something that's been done in a professional game, and it's saved somebody's life and potentially the game is when you don't have buyback like that. You sometimes seen the refresher come out. If if there was anybody else around, I could see Mag popping the refresher just for the blink dagger and getting out because one pick off at this stage of the game without buyback they could just lose because right now Vega have a really nice job of just initiating constantly with, with the Beastmaster. But if they don't have it, it could just all be over. And at the other side of things here, 
game is going to be... I wonder who's going to be favoring now, Dakota. As we, we've seen constantly in the last, you know, 10 minutes, Mag's been able to get off these Beastmaster Roars and having the pickoffs, but they have the Lincoln Sphere on top of Iceberg. I think he should go for a Sheepstick next here. Is he going to get it? Yeah. No. No, nope. Octarine Core. Going to be the item here. So he's a serious spellcaster at this moment. Vega have already made their move inside the pit. They do roast fast, and as you can see, it's not going to take much time at all. If there was to be a response from Spirit, it would be too late. Sunstrike, ooh, almost close enough to actually snag the kill, but not going to be happening here. It's all Vega for this one. They have now picked up the last two roaches. The, the one previous to this was able to get them really back into this game. Now this one might be able to close this out. Dream case scenario here for Vega is if they can kind of take a good fight, push in the base, take down two sets of racks, and, and close it out all together here. But Spirit are the team that is the richer as far as the cores go. So we'll have to see what kind of work Iceberg is going to be able to do with this new Octarine core. It might have to be put to the test here. He is moving down this lane. I don't know if they saw him move the side buyback. shot. They spotted him now with the ulti. Jump in. Nice quick cancel of the Lincolns. Leads into the shackles. Mag is going to even stack on the, the roar just to be oh safe. Oh my goodness, that game, Dakota. That's his Octarine core funds out the window. He has no buyback for 80 seconds. And, uh, well, I said something about a dream case scenario. That makes it look like it was a dream. Pick off on the mighty invoker. You don't have to worry about him in the next push. Woo. Here we go. Illidan doesn't have buyback. So both of your cores not having buyback. It's going to be a tough one to hold this high ground, attack. especially against the Aegis and the Cheese. Radiance top tower. Man. Mag showing off what he's made out of. Beastmaster. Yeah. His initiation. These last 20 minutes, in Dakota. Watch. It's all been him. For sure. Call down early here, only for the boar. And they will quickly take care of the bird using the, the kick for that one. It looks like they're probably going to be sacking this potential racks. With tier 3 already going down and the ward's already committed for this one. Phonic fakes once with the Chrono, only going to be able to catch the one with it. Could lead to Solo's quick kill. That's taking out the Enchantress, that's pretty nice, but they get their own jump from the Goblack kill there. Three-man stun right there from Always Want to Fly, but they've still made their move for the racks and the wards continue to go to work. That forces out the Glyph from Spirit. Jump in from FN and ooh, nice little bash. He takes down the Earth Spirit and this will lead to the racks being finished. They need to clean up this middle lingering range rack, so it's driving my OCD a bit crazy right now. But nonetheless, it is now Vega who are in a huge advanced placement. This swings it back their way the biggest time in this game. Team fight. It's funny how they take a better team fight when their invoker's dead. <laughs> yeah, like, really. what? It did, see, it did just... feel like everything misaligned a bit. The you know a great kick stun, but there's nothing to be able to really follow it up. Funic let things off. He he got a, a good chrono. It looked like he always almost he was trying to get no one and mm -hmm. solo together. And unfortunately, when you play right. that kind of a game and, and make the most out of your chronos, there's a chance you will miss one or the other. So the Zeus was able to kind of put out some serious firepower from the outside, but it did get rid of enchant. It had, imagine if Solo was alive for that fight. The game would have been over for sure. So Spirit did make the most of that situation. It sucks if you know, especially if you're a Spirit fan, to lose another set of racks or at least, you know, one full set of racks there in the top lane. It definitely puts their backs now against the wall and we're just gonna have to see what they're gonna be able to do. And uh Iceberg, you know. No uh, crazy, ambitious farming, especially when you don't have buyback. No. I mean, you have support spirits for a reason. You just put those guys in the lane. That helps you get out a lot of vision because you're going to be able to push out the lanes. And yeah, that's the biggest problem for them right now is they haven't been able to establish any vision. So they're, they're playing desperate. They have to play like this. They have to go smoke up at nighttime. Ooh. They might find Mag. They found Mag, but Mag sees them first. He quickly blinks away. They're even going to dish out the Thunder Gods. This could be a closing out fight for Vega. They make the move for Solo, but he already got the BKB off, so the Invoker combo isn't going to do much to him. But then once they do come out from the bubble, they quickly take her down. Mag does step up now with the Roar. It's going to isolate Illidan a bit. Illidan just getting bursted apart right now. Him and Goblike barely able to make it away. Meanwhile, up and above, FN up in arms with both Funic and always want to fly. Oh, always want to fly! He's going to get locked down before he can roll out and way to safety. Vega, they will lose two for this one. 
Oh, they lose three, actually. Three all day. Oh, FN lost his Aegis. I'm his putting Aegis. the pieces together now. I got you. I mean, you, you're allowed to make these mistakes. I mean, you're, you're the one casting well, constantly. Not in the eye of the public, board. that's for sure. No, I got you. You're not making any wrong mistakes. To, I, once again, they find out Enchantress, and they don't kill off Funic. So the story of this game so far is when they catch out Funic with Beastmaster Roar, they win the team fights, but when they catch out Solo, it's Team Spirit have the advantage. So, And I don't want to sound so simple. Simplistic or so simple minded, but that seems like the story for success so far in this game. To the benefit now of Mag, he has a refresher, so he can stun both of them in the fight and definitely win. We'll have to see if he's going to get that kind of opportunity, though. Does he didn't have the refresher for last fight? Yeah. That's probably what hurt them. They could have got another lockdown on Illidan, plus mm -hmm. the book's up again, and he would have died. Yeah. So. We'll see, though. They have it now, and I imagine... Look uh, at this. Three TPs top. Four TPs. Yeah, it's it's go time, baby. Five TPs. Let's get together. Let's hold hands. Let's beat some ass. It's probably the Vega motto right now. For Spirit, it's let's hold hands inside the base and hope we can make a strong enough wall to, to repel them off. We'll have to see if they can do it it's here. funny. Why do you think they went top lane on S5, though? When... Maybe they know there's no wards there. I'm I'm not too sure to be honest with you. Probably remaining in the dark. I, I mean, guess it's is not the best bad. bet. Invisibility. But this approach uh, is a scary one. Oh, they make their grab. Oh, and you said that if they get Funic right, they win the fight. Well, they got Funic there. Funic does have buyback. We'll probably need to use it. But Mag is going to have another roar waiting for him. I'm surprised he doesn't instantly pop refresher right yeah, now. Get it on cooldown. I mean, you're gonna this this should be. In Vegas book, the one and done fight here. So, get that refresher going, buddy. Radiance Middle Barracks are under attack. He doesn't like you. He doesn't like me either. All right. Okay, here's the buyback. Solo will be forced to do his BKB. Phonic is not going to find the Chrono. Instead, he's going to find himself into a oh. golden hex. There's the jump from Mag, and there is that new lockdown war waiting for him. Ilden, though, able to charge on forward, man. He gets a double kill. They quickly clear out three. Team Spirit showing that when they have an Invoker ready to go in a fight, they still have plenty of strength to work with. Now, always want to fly. He's going to be able to catch FN with the urn. It does Burn come so after close. the blink. FN is not going to be able to blink away from this one. Cold snap is going to force out the BKB, and he will TP away. So finally, able to, like they did it, they were able to lock down Funic twice, but at the end of it, he got the Chronosphere off, I think. Or no, the Enchantress got her BKB was slowly dwindling down, and then they were able to just immediately right-click her down. Gyrocopter BKB, don't care about no untouchable. Yep. And he's starting to hit like a truck. I think this is where Illidan goes all in. I think this is Rapier. They have a hard enough time bringing you down already. Yeah. You don't need MKB. There's no evasion. And as long as they don't get on top of you, you're golden. And with Funic. Being as he's being the one being prioritized in the team fights, I think you're going to get away with it. Yeah, this is where unfortunately uh, Ursa can fall off a bit. This late in the game, the team will have those kind of tools to really kite him around and make him just look like a lost little bear at times. I mean, four staff is on always want to fly. We've already known that the, the glimmer cape has been there for for Goblack, and when you're having to work through like the coconut stun, the kick stun, like it's already a hard enough game as it is. For this Ursa, but now late game is where it could be a bit of trouble. Iceberg has spotted out. Oh, no no one. one goes in. Quickly pops out the Ford Spirits and the Cold Snap. The Urn is going to have to come out, but that only sets up a nice little ice wall. Illidan has even rotated in, and they're going to take down the Zeus. He's out for 90 seconds without a buyback here. And Spirit rolling back into an advantage here in this one. It was at one point a little over a 10k net worth lead, the biggest lead of the game for Vega. And Spirit are just looking to kind of completely 180 this game. Illusion. Like you said, the scaling purposes for this later stages game. Funic, though, gonna be caught out here. No, too close. Well, if he waits in the high ground, maybe. But they know where FN is. They have this ward scouting him out. And if Goblack dies here, shame on you, Goblack. Shame on you. Goblack's dead. Iceberg tries to go for FN, but FN Bruno. is quickly enough. Oh, no! Funic, please! Not been a good game for Funic, unfortunately. That thing that is not gonna make things any easier. 
Ooh, that is a lost opportunity. Ursa will be able to make it away. Chrono will be on cooldown. I mean, to his benefit, he has an Agnum Scepter, so it's not on cooldown for very long, but we'll see if it's a long enough window for Vega to kind of make use with. And it looks like potentially it will be inside the Roche pit. FN is back now, and Vega, they're going for the Roche, and originally an opportunity where there should be no Ursa to do this Roche. Now they find themselves easily taking it down, and they will have the Aegis. We'll have to see if that's going to be coming back to bite Spirit on the ass or not. Actually looking to potentially intercept here. Uh, Iceberg is a bit late with the Tornado, it would appear, and Vega will get a nice big advantage. Big thing to note, even though he did miss that Chrono and it hurts him a lot, is FN doesn't have lifesteal to work with. And this is where Ursa, once he blinks on top of somebody, if you're able to turn around the damage. Oh, they're gonna get Sunstrike on top of him, almost. That could have been... That wouldn't have been enough, but... Still... Going back to the question here, Ursa not having lifesteal in these team fights is gonna hurt him a lot, so I would like to see a Vlad's on someone, but who is that someone? No one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Got him. I had to it. It was just... You know, <laughs> it was there. Uh, like, uh, they'll need so hard to spirit. decide. Yeah, life steal would be nice. Uh, maybe mag, but then he, he's already pretty much getting slotted out if he's the gem carrier, unless he opts to hand the gem off to someone else instead. Um, I mean, they could do a full item swap around some sense and give it to Solo. Solo hand the cheese off to, you know, the shaman instead. But nonetheless, everyone here is getting pretty much to critical mass at this point. And it looks like they have Refresher ready to go. So this is this is Vega's best chance. I feel like the last time they were hoping for a one-and-done kind of a fight, it ended up not working out for them, but they have now been gifted another chance to finish this game. They have been blessed by Phonic to allow him to make it away, which led him to getting this Roche and this Aegis. They have yep. Double Roar. This is it, man. Vega need to make this count because Spirit are starting to show that they are the real late-game hard hitters. And if you're going to be seeing a gyrocopter, he just purchased something. What did he get? Did he buy the gem? Got a basher. Oh, we got but a doesn't basher. have enough for a pistol. Ah, uh, so I was gonna say if he goes rapier and stuff, like you're really pushing the limits here if you're Vega. And I still think even if him going like whatever else, it you know they have to make this. Work. I think FN needs to sell his eggs right now and buy MKB. They just ha need some other damage source onto the gyrocopter uh, he's even if he gets caught out again with having the satanic online and the butterfly i think illidan will be able to survive the burst damage coming out from the shackles and stuff and i don't think they're going to get gifted those things i think illidan's like t yelling at his team like stop <laughs> stop and help me guys i'm getting bursted down by just the shadow shaman make sure you you know cancel his spells and whatnot so I think they'll be on point with that, and he's just going to be free to roam during these team fights. So you're going to have to find a way to burst him down, and the best way is going to be Ursa with an MKB and Abyssal Blade. It's, where it's a shame you don't have that Earth Spirit Ags if you've gotten it as that first item, man. It's always an easy enchant remnant. Of course, that still is good, though. Yeah, it's that fine, we were talking. You don't even need a BKB. If you enchant them, they can't do anything. It's wonderful spells created by the Mighty Frog. Spirit need to be careful here, dancing out their front door. And uh, Vega, obviously, are looking to kind of break that door down. This mid-range uh, barracks still stands, so they could get this quick cleanup, but they will need to get that bottom lane if they want to go for the Megas here. FN still has that Aegis, gets hit up a bit, and we'll have to see if Mag is going to be able to do it again here. Funnick hanging around is spotted, but... This time he's got some assistance. Look at that. He's got the Lincoln Sphere now. It's going to be continually distributed by Iceberg. They know the value that Funic brings into this. I know he missed his last Chrono, but he needs to be able to get a Chrono off in this fight. He is the MVP Very to start this fight. Yeah, he is, he is the it factor right now for Spirit if they want to be able to pull this one back. Two minutes to go on this Aegis here. 
There goes the call down, and there is the chrono, and it does connect onto two. Solo is on the outside. He was trying his best to dish out some damage in, but it's not going to be enough. With a quick burst takedown of FN's first life, no one is going to be dishing off the Thunder Gods here, but just Vega don't have enough to really square up. Now they're going to be going on full retreat. A BKB TP will allow FN to make a hasty escape, but Solo will do the same. They did end up losing their little Shadow Shaman here, but... Ryu, as you can see, Vega didn't get anything done. I mean, they lost their Aegis. They were not able to breach. I think Spirit are just going to be the, the better team from this point on. Unless, <laughs> unless they misstep. Yeah, the only missteps we're going to see is if it's coming out of Funic. And that's the problem now. You can see the Zeus is just not doing enough work. They need to have another Disable on their side for Vega. Like I was talking about with the Invoker, it would be nice for them to have a sheep stick so they can go on the offensive when yeah. their when their chrono is down. Meanwhile, Vega, they just need to get extra sources here. They need to what they did in that first time was okay, we're putting Rasta Minus on money. you know, Illidan here, then we're gonna put our Beastmaster over here on, you know, Funic. And they did a really good job coordinating locking everybody down. Uh -oh. Meanwhile, Goblack is just in no man's land. Poor guy. They have also tried to make a move for FN, it would appear, but as you said, Goblack oh, is chrono. the one potentially trapped out. They will be able to finish him off, but Mag has been caught inside the Chrono. Stun into silence here. Mag is just going to be going down real Thanks quick. Gym. And he does. He had one more roar to go, but was not going to be able to get it off. And he is out for 80 seconds without a buyback here. This could be a good moment for Spirit here, but... Unfortunately for them, these lanes are still pushed pretty far forward. They have a lot of work to do to kind of get themselves past this river and try to go back into the side of Vegas base. Oh, oh Iceberg I'm playing really aggressive right now. Yeah, man. He, he's a lone man on a mission right here, and he's trying to take down the Ursa by himself. Will not be able to get it, but it does force out Ursa's ulti. Unfortunately, that ulti is a micro <laughs> cooldown, so... Doesn't really cost a lot to Vega to avoid that bit of trouble, and Secret will continue their advance down this top lane here. It's been quite a while since we've seen them really go on the offensive. They were the first team to really do some good base work. They got this mid set of racks down, and with a racks takedown here, it actually could put them on par uh, with Vega. But as we have seen, they've been more comfortable in these team fights, and they still have over 20 seconds without the Beastmaster really even being involved doesn't really want to use buyback if he had it and they should be able to get this tier three should be able to waste the glyph here and now beast best is gonna be up in eight seconds they just came for the glyph they're gonna be backing out happy with that and they're playing safe yeah, they could just end up stalling things out till the Roche is up they already drew out the roadmap here uh, it is going to be a bit, about two minutes before we even see the initial timer, so Spirit will just do their best in the meantime to keep all lanes pushed in. And uh, it's, it's pressure on Vega's side. Do they have a smoke? No smoke and well, shop. They have one on Mag. The thing I was talking about with the Hex on the Zeus, it was for Hex for Mag. He's got two of those to work with, so I'm glad that they got those online. Mm -hmm. Another thing to note that's really cool that we haven't mentioned is the Enrage. I think you're able to enrage when they chronosphere, so that's a nice little counter if you don't have your BKB. You're able yeah. to do that FN. Okay, he gets yep, caught under go. the chrono, and you're right. He pops the ulti, and, well, not a lot of the damage was going to be going through until it canceled out. The death ward went down, and Ursa just went down so fast. Now, he does have a buyback here, so there'll be no chrono or death ward from Spirit for the next fight if he does opt to buy back it and try to find a fight here. There's the jump from Mag. They pop the Lincolns. There's going to be the rewards for Iceberg. Solo tries to go to work. He gets his own BKB off, but there's the Abyssal from Illidan. Tries to right-click him down, but it's not going to be doing enough, and now they change sides. Yeah, Iceberg, Iceberg quickly shredded apart. Here goes the Impivus damage. It's going to be getting Goblack as well. They look for Illidan. He's forced to run, but they got the vision with the help of the T-Gods there, and that will lead to a four-man takedown. Vega certainly can hold. Double kill for Solo there at the end. They beeline it. Down to check the Roche if it's going to be up here. What a back and forth game. We're over the hour mark now. And the ball is in Vegas court once again. Not respecting that high ground buyback. Not respecting Mag's, you know, refresher as well as the Sheepstick. Locking down the Invoker indefinitely. And 
You're gonna have to buy back as much as you can here. Invoker has 9k gold, no longer the case. And would like to see him. I'm curious to see what he could go for next. Like I talked about, having an extra sheep could always help. He. I guess refresher is gonna be the biggest thing, but what are you gonna replace the refresher with? Can't really. The Lincoln Sphere is needed. I guess the Octarine was my biggest question mark for them. And like you said, they beelined for Roche. Didn't respond yet, so that's a good thing for Team Spirit. Yeah. A bad thing for Vega, you know, depending on where you're looking at this game from, who's a fan of who, but they'll just have to kind of deal with the situation as it is. They won't be able to take advantage of, of numbers, but a third straight Roche and Aegis will give Vega yet another attempt and making a go, but it feels like every time they feel like, well, we'll just go, and we feel like the Aegis advantage alone is going to be enough. I don't, I'm don't. i not convinced that that's enough. I mean, the last time they made their push to the bottom lane, it did not go well. They got a good fight there. They were able to take advantage when Funic did not have the Chronosphere to work with and just did work on the Iceberg, but I don't know if that opportunity is going to present itself. I feel like Spirit are in a always seem to be in a better position, especially when they have to defend their high ground. I'm making I'm making good plays and good setups here. Yeah, both teams right now have showcased why it's so hard to breach high ground. Yeah. You're like, okay, well, here you go. More buybacks. Um, one buyback, and you just turn the team fight around completely when FN just blew up the Invoker. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, we saw what happened when, you know, Funix able to buyback, get off some good Chronospheres, and Still, we're talking about it where the two highest net worths are the cores from Team Spirit, but they're both capped out besides the Moon Shard coming in from Gyrocopter. And Invoker maybe could have a Moon Shard to play around with. Alacrity, he can right click like a truck. But at the other side of things, you know, Funic is below a support right now, and he's not making any item progression, whereas this, everybody from Vega are going to have items. Yeah. Uh, and it looks like. Plausible that he could be going for either a refresher or for maybe a Lotus Orb. You know, haven't seen one yet picked up this game. Could be okay against uh, Vegas team. Being able to bounce back that Primal Roar or get rid of those sheeps could be pretty damn useful. Uh, but already we're seeing Vega kind of doing their own unique little sieging game here, putting the Beastmaster's Zoo to work. Sieging at this bottom tier fallen. three. It's actually almost down here, Ryu. So Rax soon to be exposed. Vega on the verge of pushing in for Mega soon. Still hold that cheese and Aegis Get on their side. Or oh, maybe not an Aegis. I thought they had an Aegis. I guess I'm crazy. I just respawn. Yeah. Oh, that's right. They're gonna move in and get it. All these roses are just blending together at this point. 65 minutes in, though. Vega want to start it off with a fight here. They anticipate that Spirit will just know they're going in for the Rose. Illidan. You don't anticipate the fight from Vega on this one. Uh-oh. Goblack has crossed pass with Solo. Funic is going to get caught from the jump of Beastmaster here. Funic lives. Time staff. walks out. The four Staff is there. Solo can't Illidan. quite see him, can't hit him. Looks for always want to fly instead, and he's still good. Jumps in. Chrono only catches FN. But that might be the important target, but they can't do enough damage to him. Solo, in the meantime, continues to go to work. Is able to finish off Always Wanna Fly. Iceberg, though, gets his own response. A double kill for him as he finishes off FN and now looks for no one here. But he's getting knocked in the back of the head from Solo. Great impetus. Damage continues to come out from the mighty Bambi here. But it gets spotted out from no one. Can't make it away. And he will go down. That is a gem on the deck. Shalman will pick that one up. And this might be it for Vega. They might be able to make the push happen across the base. Iceberg is out over 90 seconds. And Haste. Vega are not allowing Spirit to take any sort of easy game this series. They really make them work. Oh, man. I really wish I could have seen what happened to Illidan's buyback and his boots of travel. I think it got the creep killed or something. He could have bought boots of travel too and TP'd on a hero. But... Oh, oh that would... Oh, I wish we had instant replay now so I could go back and see this. But this Roche, as we've seen time and time again, it hasn't benefited either side, it feels like, when you're trying to close out the game. But what amazing team fight coming out from Vega. Sad to say they're not going to be able to do anything with it just because it's taking forever to kill this Roche off. And with having Ursa down as well as Mag, they can't really go high ground. I know. It sucks too. Iceberg still... Would be out for like 40 seconds here. 
we just go right back into the same loop we've been in for three times, I feel like, now. The last three or four Roches, it's always the same story here. Vega are going to be able to take it on the back of a good fight. And yeah, this they, has to be the sixth Roach? Uh, something like Man, that. Man, I've they, lost Then count. they formulate their game plan to, to move on forward with their advance. And by the time they make it to the high ground, I mean, Spirit are going to be as five. They're going to have all of their items, all of their cooldowns ready to go. And both these teams just have stellar high ground defense, man. And the benefit, though, for Vega is they have this Shaman. And this Shaman has an Aether Lens, has an Agnum Scepter. If they sleep on these wards, these wards will just take Spirit's base. Yeah, his his cheese strategy is going to come out soon here. He's going to have a refresher, I feel. Maybe sell off the... Ghost Scepter or something, and then they just go smoke yep. into the base and place double wards. Yeah, it's dirty, but if it gets the job done and it's finals, and you need to make that trip to Kiev, then oh, by golly, get that refresher out here faster. Yeah, I rather you know I don't want to say that. Never mind. That's gonna. <laughs> I was gonna. Never mind. Never mind. I'm gonna hold that for later, guys. Fair enough. Uh, it's better not to be a janitor. Let's just say that. Mag is uh, trying to clean up his own mess here. Hoping for the Funic spot out. And, uh, I don't know what you're thinking here if you're in the mind of Funic right now. He's like, I can't really even be out there to farm. Like, my value to this team is clearly, it's just, it's just absolutely impeccable. So, can he stay far enough behind and can he land the Chrono while Vega continue to make it so difficult? So, so difficult here. And, uh, yeah, I would wager it's just a matter of waiting out for possibly the Refresher. But they do still have this Aegis. I don't know. I think the safe bet would, yeah, get the Refresher. Move in on mid lane or some sort of crazy fight and have Shaman just rush bottom, drop down wards, and hope to God you walk away the winner. If worst case scenario fails, you're going to have buybacks on for, on everybody for Vega. Like, except for your Shaman when yeah. you commit but that hard for the Refresher. So, yeah, his job's done. Yeah. It's... It's going to get into the crazy situations where, like we talked about, the cores are maxed out for Invoker and Gyrocopter here. He just needs to have a Moon Shard. He's got the boots to travel too. I can only imagine why, because <laughs> probably killed off a creep during that last, and he wasn't able to rejoin. That Then it could have went completely in Team Spirit's side of things. But here we go. Dro Ward's dropped already. Yep, that's they need one. to get on them. And that will quickly clear out the tier three. They now go to work. Forge Spirits with Alacrity even to help this one. They will be able to clear out the wards. Mild damage on the racks at best here. But Solo, Call Black. he has the Aegis, so he's going to be the real sieging force here. But they don't have the vision. Okay, now they're making a the move from Solo. Chrono on him. Actually, oh, no one. No walked one. In it. Yeah, he walked into it. He was actually outside the range, and now he's going to eat a huge death ward. The Aegis is already going to be used, and no one will be going down. Does have a buyback, going to use it, going to look to boot to travel back. Starts things off with a huge Thunder Gods while Solo goes to work for Illidan. Illidan's going to be able to get out the Abyssal Blade, but that's not strong enough. His FN will be able to come in from his flank and finish him off. Ice Beard, man. It's all Solo for this one, man. He just does the real hard hitting damage for Vega. Now with most of Spirit crumbling apart, Ilden on the sidelines for over a hundred seconds without a buyback here. Vega will clean up what is left of Spirit and then close the game out. That will do it and Vega are now going to be in a 2-0 position for this best of five final. Oh boy, what a game when it looked like anybody could take it for the last, you know, 50 minutes of this game. Incredible stuff coming out from Vega and Team Spirit and I mean, even if they get 3-0'd after this game, Team Spirit can show they can put one hell of a show on for us, and they know how to team fight. It just was two versus five kind of for me at the end of the game there, where they were like, oh, well, we have Earth Spirit, and he's kind of got the four staff. He talked about it. If he could have had the Ags, oh, man, the potential turnarounds was going to be there. Wish Doctor had his Ags. That kind of contributes all he really needed to the team fight, but just the, all the items, the extra items coming out from the cores, for the side of Vega, feels like it It just uh, boosted them at the end of the game. And with having, what, six, seven Roches? That's like a thousand or 
It was ridiculous. You know, six K gold the divided game by ends a thousand. One hour and ten minutes in, a little over seventy Ooh. minutes for just game number two. So we got to get jumping in because we still Dakota, have. Who's going to win next game? We have potentially three games ahead of us here. I, I hope Spirit will take the next game. I agree with you that they can be satisfied that they put up a good fight for that game, but they are not going to be satisfied unless they walk away with a trip to Kiev. We'll see if they're going to be able to have the they fight have back, or if Vega are going to be able to close this series out three zero. This Cobble Guy for Beyond the Summit, that's Rio Boris. We'll cut to a small break when we return. It's game number three of Vega versus Team Spirit. <laughs> 